So far as I can tell, the story that we heard this evening, the story that we read year after year after year after year, has not changed much since it was originally written. Yeah, okay, I get it. The translations have changed specific words in specific places, but overall, those changes do not change the meaning of the story. There's Joseph engaged to Mary. Mary becomes pregnant after the angel Gabriel told her that through her, God would take on human flesh. Joseph wants to dismiss Mary, but the angel of the Lord comes to Joseph in the middle of the night in a dream and tells him what is about to happen. Later, the couple is forced to travel to Bethlehem because Joseph is a descendant of David. You'll remember from Sunday school that David is the giant slaying king of Israel. So, And while the Holy Family is in Bethlehem so they can be counted, another number is added to their ranks. Mary gives birth to a son. She names him Jesus. She lays him in a manger. Now, Ricky Bobby would have you believe that there were golden fleece diapers involved, but Luke makes no mention of golden fleece diapers. Luke does tell us that there were shepherds who lived in the fields, who were summoned by the angels to Bethlehem to the manger. And when the shepherds arrive, they tell Mary everything that the angel of the Lord had told them. And Mary, we remember, ponders everything in her heart. Even if we hadn't read the story tonight, even if you didn't go home later tonight and read the story again to make sure that I knew what I was talking about, you could have recited the story and probably nailed most of the details. You might have mispronounced a name or two like I did, but when we mispronounce the names, that really doesn't change the story too much. Because, you see, the story of the birth of Jesus Christ is the greatest story that we've ever told. I know that not only does everyone know this story, but that your presence in the late evening on nights like tonight tells me that there's something about this story that draws you in. There's something about the birth of Jesus Christ that causes us to get into cars, to travel to churches in the kind of late of night, to brave the cold, and to cross the threshold of a church door. It's odd to me that we have this great story that draws people in to candlelit churches year after year. And yet so often, year after year, the church misses or the church forgets the good news that we are proclaiming tonight. It can feel like there's no room for someone or a group of people who are different from the faithful who gather for worship week after week. There's no room at the inn, they might hear from the faithful who gather on Sunday morning. They hear there's no room for you. And in an instant, it can feel like the joy that we feel on nights like tonight is traded for exclusion. I know the church can get a bad rap. There was a story in the New York Times earlier last week that was shared with me by about 50 people as if I hadn't seen it the first time it came up, saying, what's wrong with the United Methodist Church? And as I read it, I said, yeah, yeah, I know. I've, I've been here my entire life. I know. But all of us know this. There's no institution, there's no church that is perfect. From the outside looking in, it can appear that the church is against this or the church is against that. And that the church only exists to offer shoulds and musts for other people to live. I have sat through too many worship services and walked away feeling depressed. But tonight is not that night because tonight is a night of joy. We had a children's pageant earlier right here in this room. There were over 40 kids here telling the story of the birth of Christ. And I get it. I'm a parent. I know that 
Christmas pageants can often feel like, like a photo op. But I still think, I think that the fact that we do this year after year, it brings joy to us through the retelling of Mary and Joseph's journey and remembering that the Savior of the world was laid into a feeding trough. It makes the, the churchy things that seem so far out of reach, it makes those things, brought, it brings them down to the human scale. We remember that Christmas is not this far-off tale in a galaxy far, far away, but rather the story of Christmas with, is a story with sights and sounds and flesh and blood. How amazing is it that so many of us, me, pastors, people who wear robes and stoles, forget or miss the whole point of tonight? The story tells us, Luke tells us that tonight we can joyfully declare that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus is God's answer to the moments when it feels like the church is out of touch or that the world is coming apart at the seams. The story that we recall tonight is the story of great joy, the inbreaking of God's grace through a child. This is real joy. This is joy that is induced outside of ourselves. This Christmas season, we won't find joy in shopping trips to Tyson's. Believe me, I've been there this week. Or in Amazon deliveries. We certainly will not find joy this Christmas season on the Washington Post's front page. The joy of what happened in the manger is a byproduct of something that has happened to each of us. The prophet Isaiah spoke of great joy. You see, Israel had been in bondage. Israel had also lived in exile. You could say that Israel was living in the dark. You all said it at the beginning of our service. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light on them. Light has shined. God has increased their joy. But you see, the backdrop for the Christmas story is not joy. No one wants to be counted. No one wants to be told what to do or where to go. After this call for a census was given, there were multiple uprisings by Jews living within the Roman Empire. And Mary and Joseph are living in the midst of that turmoil as they travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And as they travel, their story is a story of an oppressed people who are on the move. And then... In the middle of the night, a baby boy cries out for his mother. An angel of the Lord appears to shepherds and tells them, Do not be afraid because good news of great joy is coming for all people. All people. Joy for every single person. And that's the story that's brought you here tonight. The story of great joy that breaks us from our routines of headlines about conflict and death. The story of great joy that invites us to come to the manger to see what God has done. A story that invites us to come and to taste and see in bread and wine the grace, the love of God. We are filled with joy this night because God has intruded into the natural order of human things. And this evening, we celebrate the joyful disruption of the world's ways. You see, when heaven and earth collide, the aftermath is joy, not despair and not carnage. Retired United Methodist bishop and all-around church curmudgeon, Bishop Will Willimon wrote, It's an old story, the story of the first Christmas. Here's the same old story of political oppression and political violence, of those on the bottom who must obey and those on the top who give orders. It was in Bethlehem, but it could also be in Bosnia. 
It was Augustus Caesar, but it could have been your boss at the office, a geography teacher during third period, or an oncologist. We are always being jerked around by external decrees. We want joy in our lives. When the world jerks us around, we look for ways to, to push back and even fight back. That's our story. But, and it's a big but, so you know that it doesn't lie. The story that drew you in here tonight is not a story of our initi initiative against the world's problems. We might find temporary relief in our story, but it rarely leads to the joy that we feel on nights like tonight. The joy that was laid in the manger. Deep, abiding joy is the result of what God does to us. Mary lifted her voice in song. The shepherds danced their way back to the fields. We, tonight, are joyful. We can sing this evening because God has moved and God is on the move tonight. God is active in the world, confronting the ways of the world that are not the ways of God. I know that all is not well this Christmas. I'm not naive. I know that wars are raging. I was watching the news this morning, and the pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church, it's a church in the West Bank, in a city you might have heard of, it's Bethlehem. It's the church where the church, universal, believes Christ to have been laid in a manger. And this is what the pastor of that church said. It is difficult to sing joy to the world this year. And then he pointed to their nativity scene that their church had put out. And instead of Jesus placed on a table with everyone surrounding him, the shepherds, the wise men, his parents, and, and an angel, Jesus was laying on a pile of rubble. And the, each member of the nativity scene was climbing over the rubble to see the child. But is that not the case every year? The innocents are being slaughtered. There are secrets that you are holding, things that you have done, and things that others have done to you that you cannot forgive. But come Epiphany, come Epiphany on January 6th, we are going to pack up the lights and we are going to face again the gray skies of January. The world on January 6th on Epiphany is going to return back to the ways before Christmas and we will again begin to be pulled and jerked around by external decrees. God has revealed God's self. God has revealed God's love for all of us, not through theological doctrine or religious practices, but in a child, in God's own child. God cares about us. God cares about you too much to allow the trappings of religion and theology to be a barrier between you and God's grace. God's grace tells you that God loves you just as you are here tonight. But God's love, God's grace goes a step further, saying that God loves you too much to leave you just as you are tonight. The joy we have tonight is in the fact that the grace of God has broken down the barriers we perceive prevent us from coming to God along with the barriers that we build for others and ourselves. And in breaking down these barriers through a baby in a manger, in the collision between heaven and earth, the aftermath, friends, is joy. And that is where the story pulls us back in, back in so that we can join Isaiah and Luke and the carols saying, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good noi, good news of great joy for all people to you, to you this day is born a savior who is Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen.